12 catches. Had a couple of touchdowns against the Buckeyes. I think it was like 170 yards, something crazy. And I was like, who is this dude? Why can't they guard him? <laughs> anyway, I'm over that now. I'm over it. I'm over it, Rondell. Hey, thanks for joining us, Michael Holly, Michael Smith. How you doing? What's today? up, man? I'm great, man. I appreciate you guys having me. How are you guys? Absolutely. Now, oh, now did I get the year. Was that your freshman year against Ohio State? We had like 12 catches against them. Right. What was that? Uh, and what was that game like for you? And by extension, what was that season like for you? Because it's not like, you know, some guys come out of high school and either they're redshirted their first year or there's some type of transition to college football. But for you, it was almost immediate. You came into college football and you were uh, great from the start. What do you remember about that game and, and, and about your freshman season? Yeah, man, that game was crazy, to say the least. I, I we, uh, Ohio State was ranked second in the nation um, at the time. And uh, obviously, like you said, I got a chance to have a great game. And we were clicking all three phases that night. Um, we got the upset. And it was great. And I don't know how much you know about Tyler Trent and his story, but uh, he was a, he was on our side that night. He was a student there um, who unfortunately passed away um, from cancer. But uh, like I said, he was on our side and, and we had, you know, all the luck and everything going right uh, that night. But I mean, that season for me was was um, really interesting to say to say a little bit about it. And um, hats off to everyone who's been a part of the process before I got there. Uh, you know, I was able to hit the ground running, um, like you said, as a true freshman. And I mean, the stats are right there. I had 114 catches, 1200 receiving yards and 12 touchdowns. But I mean, I can't thank my teammates, my coaches, and um, like I said, everyone else who's been a part of the process for just, you know, um, helping me with the learning curve and being able to hit the ground running when I got to school. So, listen, man, I'm sure, and you're a level-headed young man from everything we've uh, we've read and even just heard so far in this conversation, I'm sure you're trying not to get too caught up in what's being written, what's being said, what's being speculated. But I got to imagine it's hard to tune it out completely, especially as we get close to April 29th. As, you know, this time in a couple weeks from now, your name might have been called already, or should be called already, actually. Um, I guess I say all that to say, what are you hearing that you put some kind of stock into? Like, what are some of the rumblings about how early you could go? Can you share with us maybe some teams that have seemed especially interested compared to some others? What can you tell us about this process and where it stands for you? Yeah, it's a little bit more interesting on my end because I don't really put stock or value in a lot of stuff that I read um, online, if you will. So for me personally, I don't really get too involved about what goes on. I just kind of speak with my agent, my family, and, and control what I can control. So um, I don't really value too much of the information that gets put out, if that means anything. And as far as teams, I've, I've talked to all 32 teams. And um, up to this point, it's been hard to gauge, I guess, who has the most interest in me. Yeah. For me, it's, a lot of it's been the same as far as um, obviously gathering information about me and then uh, giving me an install. I'll go over my offense and, and that kind of stuff. So a lot of it's been uh, the same. And like I said, I couldn't really tell you um, who likes me the most. Yeah. Or who well, well, tell me this. As we look at the uh, PFF grades there, and they got you above Elijah Moore and after Jalen Waddle <clears throat> from Alabama. And so that's that's subjective in a lot of cases. But I, I want to know from you, who do you like? Like whether it's in the college game or pros that are, are out there now or pros who used to be uh, in the NFL. What wide receivers or football players do you look at and say, oh, yeah, I see what they're doing and I like it. I mean, those two guys you named can ball, no doubt about it. And um, I got a chance to watch a little bit of Elijah in high school um, and Jalen as well. He was on the you know opposite team at the All-American game and then Elijah at the uh, opening finals. But I mean, they both can ball and had great seasons and I think they'll be great players at the next level. But uh, as far as guys in the NFL now, I guess who I like to study um, for me personally in the slot, since we're talking about slot receivers right now, I mean, um, Cooper Cup, Cole Beasley, uh, I, those are those are two big ones. I, mean, I think they're just you know pure receivers that can line up and then do both. Um, I mean, Devontae Adams, Diggs, even Michael Thomas in the slot, I think is is, is great there. But um, I mean, those type of guys, Keenan Allen, all those guys, I do a great job on Sundays of finding various ways to win. 
So you did a phenomenal job at your pro day, as we've already talked about. Uh, four, three, four, 40, 42 and a half inch uh, vertical. Uh, we know you can squat 600. Uh, I think it's fitting, Rondell, that you have such great measurables. But the other thing that a lot of people say about you is that which is immeasurable, which is your intangibles. Like your work ethic is legendary. You know, your determination, your focus is legendary. Didn't you graduate from Purdue in two and a half years or some crazy stuff like that? Like, I mean, right. yeah, it's like the, the amount of time you put into your craft is incredible. Uh, where does that come from? Where does that drive and that determination come from? Because before you joined us, we literally had a conversation as parents, <laughs> as fathers, about pushing our kids. And I said, I told my son, I don't want you to fear me. I want you to fear mediocrity. And, and you are incredibly driven and incredibly focused. Where did that come from? Yeah, I think a lot of it is just uh, being surrounded by everyone who's, who's been a part of the journey. And that's my family, my friends. Um, even going to Purdue, I think, was um, very important in my development as a player, as a person. But um, if I had to say one person, my mother. And I say that simply because we pretty much grew up, you know, bottom of the totem pole when you talk about um, how much money you bring home a year. And, uh, and I never knew simply because she worked so hard to kind of hide it from us in a sense, because what was important to her is us having fun, us staying in school. And for me, all A's was a standard. So, um, that was, that was kind of, uh, the, the, I guess the motivation, uh, that I, that I needed or in my life who just you know, continues to keep me going. And, um, I mean, who I talk to every day about, um, you know, just maneuvering throughout life. Yeah. I love to hear that. I love to hear that, uh, you know, being a, the product of a single mom myself, I always, uh, always shout out and, and, and stand up for a single mom. So straight up, that is great. Now I need you to help me out here though. Let's yeah. walk us through this. Let's let's get scientific here. Let's do it. Two and a half years. Graduating in two and a half <laughs> years from Purdue. Okay. Yeah. This is this is an excellent school. So like what how how'd you do it? Just like give us what was your mentality? What was your studying like? Just you're helping us and you're helping somebody uh yeah. become a better student on the on the way to graduation. Yeah. How'd you do that? Well, well, first of all, I had a plan as a 17-year-old before I committed to a school that one, I wanted to sit down with the academic advisors um, at the universities in order to figure out a plan. If the opportunity did present itself to go to the NFL in three years, I'd have my degree. Uh, so therefore, I got a chance to sit down with everyone and kind of map it out. I couldn't enroll early, and I didn't have any college credits going into uh, college or any that carried over from high school. So therefore, um, every summer I took 12, I stayed there in May, um, and I was pretty much 21 every fall semester. And my last semester, out the door, I took nine classes, 27 hours uh, to Come get on. it done. Nine classes, bro? Okay. Rondell, uh, I didn't take a class was... before 9 a.m. Like, if it was before <laughs> 9 a.m., I didn't sign up for that class. <laughs> That's how I so, you are completely putting us to shame right now. Hold on. So give us some of those, give us some of those nine classes. They were just, if you remember them. I'll give you my hardest ones because I I'll always I always remember these. Well, I, two for sure when you accounting. So obviously financial and managerial were my hardest classes I took. Stat, um, econ, um, and then obviously my freshman year were a lot of like generalization classes. So more so classes that were required that you had to take regardless of your major. Core um, you know, much complicated. Yeah. But um, those 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 classes I just named definitely gave me the most. Um, I guess I guess gave me the hardest time. I mean, I didn't get a C till I got to college. So, and I, I can't even say I had a B before I got to college. So that was those classes kind of humbled me a little bit. And uh, my mother and I had some conversations <laughs> about those. But yeah, that was um, those were interesting. <laughs> what did mom say? When you brought uh, she kinda, like I said, I, what'd your mom say? Yeah, like I said, A's were the standard. So when I got to college and I'm like, Mom, I, I failed my first test. She's like, oh, what's going on? Like, you need to, what's up? I'm like, Shh, just, this is just tough. Like, and I'm studying. Um, I mean, obviously after practice, I would 
go home and study for a few hours, you know, watch whatever film. Um, and then obviously if I had time to play the game or whatever, I would do that. But uh, every break I got, man, I was trying to finish some homework. And then obviously um, hats off to, you know, the learning mentors and everyone at Purdue. I mean, Lacey, uh, Nancy, um, Seth, everyone like that was a part uh, of my process and helped tremendously with just, you know, staying after hours and allowing me to come in on weekends and, and doing whatever I could to like, get home and, and get some time to myself and just stay, you know, uh, mentally in it because it's definitely draining. But I, I'm yeah. curious about like, go ahead, Mike. you know, yeah. for you to be able to, yeah, I'm sorry, for you to be able to graduate in two and a half years and carry the kind of course load you did, take the classes that you did, like you said, with no, you couldn't enroll early, no college credits that you earned in high school. So you got it the hard way. Give me an idea. Give us an idea. What is your daily routine like? Because that, that, that takes discipline. So I imagine even now that you've graduated, you have a disciplined regimen and routine that you probably subscribe to every day. So for the young people out there who, you know, are looking for, you know, what it takes to get to the point that you have and, and obviously beyond pretty soon, what's your day to day routine, right? What kind of dedication do you have to display every single day? Yeah, well, I'll kind of speak about when I was in school and and give you like a day um, as if we're in the season. Well, my first like my freshman year, I had a class at like 8 a.m. And, you know, at Purdue, um, you know, the further up north you get, the colder it gets. But I mean, it'd be single digits um, when I'm waking up for that class. But um, I my lift, I'd wake up around 7 a.m., 645. Uh, the lift would be at 8 a.m., so i get to the facilities, I'd have breakfast and whatnot. Um, I'd lift at 8, my first class would be at 9.15, lift done at 9, hurry up and shower, do what I got to do in order to make it to class on time. Um, I would get to class and basically have class from 9 to about 12. Um, after that, I would transition into lunch. After lunch, around 12-something, uh, I would get to the facilities, get a little time to chill. If I had time to do some homework, I would do so. But... Um, I would get taped, we'd have meetings, we'd have practice, and then after practice is uh, kind of time to get better for me. So I had to sacrifice something, whether that be video games, um, going out to eat with your friends, whatever the case may have been, but um, recovery, mm. catching extra footballs from the quarterbacks, jugs work, um, film, whatever that may be. And then get home, uh, you obviously shower, you got dinner with the team. And this is this is where it started for me. So. Uh, as far as my schedule goes and just trying to stay ahead of the curve, I, so the advisors at Purdue, I don't know if this is for everyone, but they would basically help with all your, assi like put your assignments down on a sheet, what you have do that week um, and kind of break it up. Um, so it was like even throughout the week. And for me, I would have like nine assignments a day. So I would try to finish like two or three days in a day. So towards the back of the week, uh, when getting closer to the game, I wouldn't have as much to do. And I would just stress myself out at the beginning of the week. So when it was time to play, I didn't have to think about school. But um, I kind of just, like I said, um, use their assistance um, when they helped me put down all those assignments. And I would literally just knock them out. So I would go home, actually, because when they, when they found out, like I was – about business, they trusted me to go home and do my work. So I didn't have to be at study hall all night and then I have to drive home and do all that crazy stuff. But um, yeah, I got to go home and basically just sit there on my laptop and literally get all my work done for the um, the upcoming days. And then towards the end of the week, I was pretty much done with everything unless it was like four page papers and that kind of stuff. But uh, that's kind of how I handle it, honestly, is just staying ahead of the work. And what, wow. and what about now, you know, not, it, not in between college, you're between school and, and you haven't gotten drafted yet. What about now? Like, I'm curious about your routine that you maintain yeah. uh, leading up yeah, to the so draft. I'm, yeah, I'm uh, back home with my trainer, who I've been working with since my summer of my eighth grade year going into my freshman year of high school. But pretty much three workouts a day, man. Wake up, I have breakfast. Uh, the first session will be conditioning. Um, the second one will be a lift, and then we'll transition into position work. But... Um, I've got a lot of time on my hands, to be honest with you, because I'm done with working out around probably three, four o'clock. And then from there, if I don't have any media or interviews with teams, then I'm pretty much just playing video games and getting my rest. But um, that, that's kind of how I've been for the last, I'd say, three months, to be honest with you. Wow. Well, that's great. You put the student in student athlete, Michael Holland. That's right. You heard me? You put There's the no student question. in student athlete. That's for sure. And, and <laughs> 
And I was gonna say, and this this is the last thing I have for you. You know, a lot of times you'll hear, especially in the pros, you'll hear of of a wide receiver taking some time to learn an offense and got to figure out this offense. Seems like you pick things up pretty quickly. I, <laughs> yeah. I know you hear about some complex offenses, uh, whether it's at Purdue or things that you watch. You don't anticipate that being one of your issues, right? No, I think I'm a pretty smart guy, and I think. Um, I, if I do everything on the back end in order to just understand it, and that just means taking the time out to actually look at it and try to learn, I think it won't be a problem for me. Well, I'm going to tell you, man, <sighs> cannot wait to see where you get picked. Um, wherever you get picked, it's going to be a bargain because it, it, it's clear to us that whoever gets you is not only getting a playmaker on the field, but getting somebody they can trust and they know that it's about their business in the locker room and off the field. So you're definitely going to be additive to a team in a lot of different areas. And uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to talk to you, man. Congratulations. When those tears are flowing on draft night, we're going to know exactly why, because you definitely earned it. You worked very hard to get where you are. So all the best to you and your family, man. No doubt, man. I appreciate it. Pleasure meeting you guys, too. Yeah, likewise. Right, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, we'll no talk doubt. to you. Talk hey, to you listen. When you're making the Pro Bowls and whatnot. <laughs> exactly. We'll talk to you. Don't forget us. Don't forget us. We talked to you, uh, you know, on the way up. <laughs> for sure. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.